Welcome to 28 and Searching. I'm your host, Samantha, and today I have Malia Delonte on with me. Hi, Malia. Thanks for coming on my show. Hi. It's great to be here, or it's great to be on the show. <laughs> so <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where are you currently residing? How old are you? How long have you been in your industry? That sort of thing. Um, I am currently, well, I'm about to actually purchase a home, um, my very first home, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Um, in Covington, Washington. So that's very exciting. And, um, I'm 28 years old, which is appropriate for this podcast. <laughs> and, um, I have been, um, I've been doing, um, art and art related stuff essentially my whole life. So it has set me up well to kind of be in the place that I'm at right now, which is um, owning my own business. Very cool. So what what is your business? What do you do? Um, so my husband and I, about a year ago, started a um, contracting business, and it's called Tribu Contracting. And about like three months into doing that, I realized that it it wasn't just – It wasn't just going to be a contracting thing. My husband really likes to build furniture and do small woodworking projects, and I really love to create art. And we decided that it would be good if we started to move towards having like an art collective, um, which launched this idea of Tribu Collectivo, which is where um, we create art or woodworking pieces or furniture, um, and we encourage our friends who create art to get together and we um, sell that to people. <laughs> and okay. So that, that's our business. Okay. And so, so is it just you and your husband or is there, I mean, you just said you talked to friends. So do you do like, um, almost where you, you do a collective, like where you, um, I'm, the words escaping me right now, but like a co-op. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So a collective is just a co-op for artists. Okay. Um, and yeah, so right now it's, Primarily Mark and I, um, I paint and draw and um, make knickknack things. I don't know what else to call them. And then um, Mark creates uh, picture frames. Um, He's installing this really beautiful, like, live edge mantelpiece um, next week, which he's really excited about. Um, And then, but I also have a friend, um, and she does uh, needlepoint. Okay. Um, and she does like fun sayings and she does custom pieces. Like she has a friend who has a really beautiful, um, pit bull. And so she did a needlepoint based on a picture of that pit bull. It's really beautiful. So yeah, she's, she's getting involved and I have another friend, um, who does little drawings on cards and sends them to people and she's decided to get involved. So yeah, it's, it's growing all the time and that's good. Okay. So it being a co-op and you being the owner, you and your husband, what is, what is it that you are doing? I'm, ass- I'm assuming you wear a lot of hats, but is, are you guys like in control of the business side of the art collective? Yeah. So we own the business, um, license and all of that, that kind of stuff. And then, um, in terms of like being a part of the collective, essentially right now, it's just that they're a part of it, you know, we, um, business licenses aren't expensive. And, um, so if there's any fees or anything associated with their products and they take care of that, we have a friend who does, um, she makes caramels and she really wants to be involved, but, um, we have to make sure that that is all cool with the FDA and stuff before we move forward with that. So, um, and that's on her. So that's, so it's a, it's more of a balance. And then Mark and I just take up the, the um business license part of it and then they pay taxes out of whatever they make okay and so do you guys deal with are you dealing with like the marketing and the like accounting portion of that or is that also divided between the collectors yes ma'am yes we are (laughs) okay okay Uh, (laughs) yeah I have kind of become the accountant especially for the contracting piece that has that has been almost a hundred percent me and um, some of it is Mark, and um, we use an app that's free called Wave. Yeah. Okay. I'm <laughs> and, very um, familiar. Yeah, and it's it's a great it's a great way to do it. We we tried QuickBooks out, and it was just a little bit too complicated for what we were ready to do. And I'm sure that it'll be better down the line uh, to use something more complex like that. But for now, um, 
Wave is working really well, and we're about to file, file year-end taxes, and it's it's working out really well. So um, accounting is a lot of paperwork, and I'm not going to say it's not hard, like it's not difficult, but it isn't as overwhelming as people want to make it seem. It's totally cap- it's totally possible for individuals to to do that for themselves if they want to own their own business, as long as you stay on top of it. Okay, so once it goes, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, n- yeah. If you like let all your receipts get out of control, it's kind of like, oh well, you just took a loss on that. Okay, and how how did you kind of get to this point? How did uh, Tribu? Is that how you say it? Tribu. Tribu. How did Tribu come about? How did you guys get to this point? Um. So we briefly lived in Mexico about three years ago or two years ago, three years ago, three years ago. And um, we were up in the mountains in Oaxaca and we, we just happened across a artist collective up in the mountains and we got to know the artists there and we loved what they had done. And we were like, wouldn't this be such a great idea to do something like this in the United States where art has become um, almost snobby. Um, you know, you, you're paying $10,000 for very abstract art. And um, there's something that's really great about that. But there's also, you know, it makes it, it makes art and things like art unaccessible to to people who don't make enough to spend $10,000 on a, sure. on a tiny eight by eight frame, you know? So yeah. um, we just, we had the idea that it would be really cool to bring like something like that back to the United States. And when we got back, we got busy doing other things and trying to work regular nine to five jobs. And that wasn't fulfilling or good. And, um, my husband in particular is, he's a bit sassy. And so, (laughs) um, he's a great employee, but he's always wanting to do more than what his job description is. And that was never going to work out with somebody above him. Sure. So we just made the choice to take a leap and start our own business. Um, and so far, fingers crossed, it's it's been actually very successful, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so w- when we're talking about that, um, do do either of you guys have um, any formal degrees or education in business? Uh, no. So okay. I never finished college. I did one year of it, and I decided it just wasn't for me. I didn't like having to take... 101 classes to fulfill a credit. Um, that being said, that means I have zero debt um, in terms of, of college, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, Mark has a an AA in art, actually. Um, and he was a photographer for a while at the beginning of our marriage, and um, he has his AA in photography. Um, but he, we've never taken any business class. Okay. <laughs> which is maybe, maybe negative, but... Um, uh, but I mean, it's, it's about making mistakes and figuring them out along the way and, um, trying your hardest to not make those mistakes. But like for the entire first three quarters of the year, we were overpaying on taxes, um, which is not usually a problem that businesses have, but now yeah. <laughs> like we're feeling really confident about fourth quarter because the government owes us money. So it's not, yeah, not as big, not of, a big deal. of a deal. Yeah. But I mean, that's a huge mistake. And we, we were feeling like we weren't doing very well because we were overpaying in taxes. Sure. Um, so, so yeah, so I think we didn't have any education around it, but we took the time to just utilize Google. So and- if you, if somebody's wanting to do this, do you think it's important for them to have any sort of training or, you know, maybe just like, uh, you know, a Coursera class or anything like that with, based on your experience with it? Um, I think if you're going to start your own business, you don't, you have to be obviously like good or gifted at something Mm -hmm. um, that you're, you're going to offer to other people. Um, But I don't think you necessarily need training of any kind. Um, You just have to want it Um, because all of the, all the time you're going to think, you know what, I should just get a nine to five job and do this on the side. And that, that's a constant, you know, it's, it's a safer bet to have somebody else paying 
the government your taxes for you and perhaps somebody else writing your paychecks. Like it's just a safer bet, but um, it's I, for us, it's really been worth it. And, but you do have to really want it and to be willing to work a lot initially um, in order to, to make that work and be your own accountant and be your own marketing and be your own branding and all those kinds of things. Sure. So if somebody was wanting to get into maybe doing art for a living like you're doing, um, where they're, you know, they're, they're their own boss, what would be a good starting point for them to kind of get their feelers out there if that was something that they were prepared to do? Um, I think with art, give it to your friends. Um, okay. As much as I think there, there are people who really argue against this. And I think that once you're a little established, this is, this is not a good thing to do. But initially when you're just thinking, you know, I might, I might be interested in doing my own thing with art and kind of trying to making it a living. Mm -hmm. I think you just have to make as much of it as possible and give it away constantly and nothing on like huge canvases or anything, but I make uh, greeting cards. And so I, I hand draw out little sketches and I send greeting cards like this Christmas we sent out 75 Christmas cards that were hand drawn oh my goodness and to sell something like that I'd probably charge between five and seven dollars for a hand-drawn card but um but it's great marketing and you know somebody's gonna put that on their fridge and somebody's gonna grab it and say oh wow like that's so great like who did this and they can say oh my friend Malia you know sure I think your friends are your biggest um, support group. So find friends that are willing to pimp you out. <laughs> <laughs> like find friends that, that love what you do and um, encourage and inspire you because I think that that has been the number one thing where we've gotten all of our work has just been referrals from people that we love who love what we do. Okay. All right. And so when you're talking about being your own boss in the art industry and doing what you're doing, what personality traits do you think work well within that environment? Ooh, um, personality traits that work well. Um, I think you have to be stubborn on some level. Okay. Um, which is, it's probably not a great personality trait for most other jobs, but you have to be stubborn on some level and be willing to hear no and keep coming or to not hear anything at all and keep going. Um, Perseverance. Yeah. Perseverance for sure. Um, uh, And I think um, like finding a, a good split between having patience, but also being impatient um, because it's, you know, you do have to wait for things to happen, Sure. but you also have to be willing to say like, I've waited long enough. It's time to like take new steps or to try something different or, um, or those kind of things. So you're trying to, trying to figure out where. So do you think instinct has a lot to, to do with that? Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, instinct can be wrong too. Um, <laughs> so, so I mean, I think. Like, yeah, and then additionally, being able to, like, laugh at yourself constantly. Sure. <laughs> um, and when you fail, using that as a platform to to jump higher, you know. Um, yeah. Just using it as a, as a place to start from, like, all right, well, I failed this time in this way, and next time we'll do better. Um, and even if it fails, it's maybe at least better. And that's, that's all you can really hope for. And I think that's, yeah, so perseverance definitely – um, the ability to laugh at yourself, yeah, and some um some p- patience and impatience balance. Okay, all right. And so, with within yourself, what do you think is the one personality trait that has made it so that you guys have been able to become successful? Um, I think. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> We're we're a good team. I do think that that helps a lot. Um, if I'm having a crisis, then Mark usually rallies, and that's great. If he's having a crisis, I usually am able to rally. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, okay. I, 
yeah, I think I think perseverance though would be the thing. Um, I mean, even today we were having a conversation about what's the next leap that we need to take. Um, so yeah, just perseverance and risk taking, I guess. Okay. And so if there was one trait that if somebody had, you would just tell them, don't think about going into your own business, especially not in art. What would that trait be? Um, laziness like or uh and I, I like if if you're somebody who just doesn't like to work for other people because you you would rather netflix and chill um it's probably best that you don't start your own business and not like I, I know a lot of people who talk about how much they don't like their jobs and they're always like yeah i could totally start a business for myself but they don't dislike their jobs because they work so hard and don't get appreciated they dislike their jobs because they don't want to work hard yeah and if you are going to start a business for yourself you have you have to be willing to say like oh it's october 31st and taxes are due like i'm gonna stay up until midnight and it submitted at 11 59 like um you you have to be willing to make make that happen um or when there's no jobs coming in, you have to be willing to stalk people on Facebook groups and yeah. like like see where the requests are happening. You know, like that that has to happen, and you you have to be willing to step outside your comfort zone and do it. So I think um, there are a lot of people who say oh, they they always talk about it like oh I could totally start my own business, and usually the people who talk about it are the people who should not do it. <laughs> Um, it's the people who never talk about it, but you see them hustling on the side. Like those are the people that should start their own business. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And so what is one personality trait within yourself that you've struggled with in doing this or that you've kind of had to change yourself or change the job to work through, um, that part of you? I'm super frugal. Um, (laughs) I don't like to spend money. I would keep it in a tin under my bed. Like, I don't even want to take it to the bank. Like, <laughs> sure. Um, and so it's hard for me to invest in myself. Um, mm-hmm. So if I need new art supplies or whatever, like, I'll just kill every single, like, art. I'll, like, every pen will be used to the very last ounce of ink. Every, like, paintbrush will be, like, used within an inch of death until it's just, like, dripping <laughs> like little like paintbrush threads Marks. Um, yeah. I I use like I try to use all of the paints that I have before I buy new ones instead of like buying colors that work <laughs> I got, like I'm like all right well I'm down to like dark brown and black gotta figure out something to do with this and I do and that's great but it would have maybe just been better if I had just invested in myself <laughs> sure okay uh, so I think that that's the hardest thing for me to work through I'm I constantly want to say like, oh no, I should take that money and put it in savings or oh no, I should take that money and pay off the credit card bill or, oh, you know, like there's a million things that I would rather be doing with it. So that, that's been a difficult one. <laughs> so are you finding that the old time saying you got to spend money to make money is uh, accurate at times? It It is. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to. You don't want to admit I, it. Yeah, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to bow to that, but um, <laughs> uh, it, it is true to some extent. I do, I do think like you want to be wise and not like, um, I really want a drawing table, um, but I'm not going to buy one because they're real expensive. Yeah. Um, and I have a husband who builds stuff, so I'm going to make him build me one, but I also have like planned it out. Like he's going to like build me one for my birthday. And, like, I feel like that is a reasonable <laughs> request and, like, the, all of those things. So, like, I didn't get any Christmas presents. And then for my birthday in April, he's going to build me a drawing table and we're, we're, we're planning towards it. Um, but that's how that's how crazy frugal I am is that I, I draw on the floor. <laughs> that's <laughs> because hilarious. Because I'm, I'm too, too cheap to get an easel or a drawing table. Jeez. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And so with owning your own business, um, I mean, there's really not a ladder or a lateral move, but I mean, you guys moved from doing 
just the construction right to now doing a collective. Is there other things that you can include or move towards given the path you guys are on? Um, I mean, I think a collective is pretty broad, which is nice. Um, I think that that's kind of where my heart is. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Mark would love to move a little bit actually away from, uh, doing more construction, construction, like he does a lot of remodels and he'd love to move toward more of the, uh, furniture building and installation pieces, um, frames and stuff like that rather than doing like really big jobs where he has to do plumbing or, or other things. So I actually think we're, we're kind of trying to move more into that, that collective piece. Although we've talked about some other options in terms of broadening. Um, I really like essential oils. I have good friends who sell essential oils and like, it would be cool to broaden that to include, um, that and soaps and different kinds of things like that. But those are, again, those are a little bit harder because the FDA yeah. controls yeah. stuff like that. So it, it it would take a little bit more work. Okay. Okay, so there are, there are different aspects of art that you guys can then integrate into what you're doing. So if somebody's looking to open their own business in art, it could be in pretty much any medium. Yeah, for sure. I think um, – I think opening your own art business in general, whether you draw or paint or create sculptures or create furniture or I have no idea. Like there's just so much um, print photos if you're a photographer, um, which is a popular side gig that people would do these days. Um, I think that, that that all just corresponds to that same just small business owner. Mm-hmm. It's It's hard to be that, but I think that we all have some commonality in the fact that we we try to do what we love and then we work really hard doing all the paperwork for <laughs> to, in order to do the things that we love. Yeah, I, I had another interview um, with a gentleman who owns, you know, his own uh, brewery and he said that, you know, 85% of the job is, you know, or 75% of the job is paperwork and then 25% is what he loves to do. Yeah. Um I think for me, it's, well, well, that's maybe accurate. (laughs) Um, As much as I, like, there are seasons, right? So, like, they're, like, like right now we're in tax season. So, right now that's all that is occupying my mind. I'm trying to spend time doing other things, but I only get halfway through projects for the most part in terms of, like, creating. Um, Because I'm, I've got to call the CPA. I've got to figure out. Uh, profit and loss statements for the year. I've got to yeah. like do all those things. So, so yeah. So that's maybe it's maybe accurate. I say I would say for me it's maybe closer to to fifty fifty. Yeah. Uh, about half the time I spend creating, and that's great. And then the other half of the time I spend filling out Excel sheets and Google spreadsheets. Sure. So uh, what are, I mean, I'm assuming that that's part, that this would be part of the drawbacks, but what, what are some of the drawbacks of choosing to start your own business in the art industry? Uh, in an, it's inundated with artists, honestly. There's a ton of art available by people who are well-known. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, maybe worse than you are. <laughs> like, they may be stuck, but, like, somebody likes their stuff, you know? Yeah. And or paid, notoriety, yeah, or notoriety, like, and they paid tons of money for it, and so now, like, what you do, which is maybe similar or better, like, just doesn't compare, just simply because you don't have the the existing marketing, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I think that has been really hard to be my own marketer is really difficult. I don't like asking people like, Hey, do you like my art? <laughs> like, sure. That seems like really insecure. So, <laughs> um, but you kind of have to, right? Like you have to post it everywhere. And like I said, like with Christmas cards, like I put business cards in all of them and I like branded the back of them with our, our little logo and, you know, put our website underneath and it's, there's a lot of that. So Yeah. Okay. And so if, you know, 
um, you know, if we were to talk about stereotypes and you talk about a lot of artists, they're going to be most of the time they're going to be introverts, right? So they're not going to be necessarily wanting to market themselves. That may be a drawback with doing it on your own is the fact that you kind of have to become your own marketer and you have to promote your work. Yeah, for sure. I I would say though, there's, that's maybe true. Um, Successful artists have either learned how to hide the fact that they're introverted or they have a really excellent manager. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cause I would say that the majority of my artists that, that make it quote unquote, that, that become famous or, you know, they can be featured in galleries in downtown Seattle, et cetera, sure. um, tend to be a little bit snobby. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether or not they're introverted, I didn't, I couldn't speak to that as much, but they tend to be a little bit more like, Oh, that's so cute that you think you're an artist. Like, where have you had a gallery opening? And you're like on Facebook, <laughs> that's what that's. <laughs> called right it's a gallery of photos um and uh so that but yeah so you do have to be your own marketer and that that is scary I think even if you're extroverted I'm I'm pretty extroverted but I don't I don't like self-promotion sure so I think like that that it's it's scary it's a scary piece so it almost is like you have to be a tenacious person otherwise some of this stuff will be a little bit of a drawback yeah you, yeah, for sure. Um, you have to, yeah, you have to be willing to want, you have to want it. You have to be willing to work for it. Okay. And yeah, tenacious is a good word for that. So when we're talking about, um, you know, you talked about that it's induated with a lot of art. Um, what, what is the job market? Like, like, can you make a livable wage doing this? Um, I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be real honest. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. That's, I know that that's there, fair. there are other people that do. I'm, I'm really lucky. Mark's contracting business is doing really well. And so I'm a, I have, we have two young kids. Um, one of which is too young to go to school. So I stay at home with her because it's cheaper than getting daycare and finding a job. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm able to do what I love because his his job is providing for that but i mean we had to do a lot of marketing to get that too you know it's a lot of hustle well and to- i would say that it almost is correlating right because this yeah. this is all working together and you own that business as well so yeah. i mean if you're able to make a living off of that it's similar yeah i think it's easier to find people especially in suburbia which is kind of where we live um it's easier to find people that want to upgrade or update or whatever their house than it is to find people who are willing to pay for artwork by somebody who's not necessarily famous. Um, but it is a, it's a good environment though to live in because there are people in this area who are interested in looking for, um, upcoming talent. And so Mm -hmm. it is kind of a good area in that respect. Like we're, we're going to participate in the farmer's market in our area this year because we had so many people suggest that we do that because they thought that, hey, like your art is affordable. It's perfect for a farmer's market at which like where like a lot of times things are not affordable. True. So um, so I think that there, yeah, that there's pieces of it that kind of lead me to believe that we could we could make this a piece of our sustainable um Income. Living income. But um, at this point, like, I'm not sure yet. We're still kind of launching my whole art piece of it um, okay. that I'm trying to build. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm i making enough that, like, we, I think, like, we can pay, like, one of our car payments right now. Sure. What, so you're making it, enough to continue. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Okay. Cool. Um. So... This one always seems to be a little bit tough for people to answer, but what has been the worst day of this career path for you so far? Um, in September, I don't, I don't know that I could tell you the day, Sure. but this past September, um, we obviously, we started our contracting business last October. So of 2016, so we had a, a third quarter or a fourth quarter 
of 2016 and then we're, we're moving through 2017. We've had a full year, but, um, in September we had a woman cancel a job midway Oh, and that was really horrible. Like it was supposed to be like a, like a $12,000 job, um, of resetting the house and like doing a couple of other projects. And she had, we normally take a down payment. We require a down payment of 60% of the project up front mm-hmm. um, on the day that we start. So not not before we start any work. But on the day that we start, we require a down payment of 60%. Um, and that's because we've had people like Bail. refuse to pay yeah. in the past, um, yep. which has been rough. But so Well, that's woman, very common in the, in the construction industry. So Yeah. And I, and I get, too, that there are sometimes construction guys who, like, take a payment and then never start your job. So, I mean, I, I get both sides of it for sure. So we decided that 60% was kind of a safe bet, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that'll probably pay for all the materials up front. You know, like, all of that stuff is good. Yeah. So, um, and she had talked us down to not paying 60%. Um, and had Mark out to work for a couple of days and then decided to cancel the whole thing and then demanded that we like show her that we had, that she had used up her, her percentage that she had already paid. Oh no. And we were like, okay, well like, yeah, like, like he worked this many hours. So like it plus like $200 over what you paid. And she was like, well, I'm not paying that. And we're done working on the project. Like we just, we're not, we're not going to finish it. And at that point, Mark had stripped all the siding off her house. So he was like, well, you need siding on your house. Like you have to have siding on your house. We're entering fall. Um, and he had blocked off the entire month of September to do her project. Um, and she canceled like the first of September. Oh, and no. we didn't realize, but it makes perfect sense now no one starts construction projects in September because all their kids are getting settled in school. They're getting back into the rhythm of life. Like in this area, this is just not the time that you start work. Sure. So we, we hit up everybody that we knew. We tried to, you know, do tiny jobs for people and just nobody was hiring. And so we, we did like, I want to say like $300 in the month of September. And so at the end of the month, I was like, we're going to have to pay our car payments with our credit card. Like, yeah. oh, like no. you know, like, like, like this the is struggle. the worst yeah. thing. Like, like I cannot believe like this is, this was maybe a mistake. We maybe need to like shut the business down. Like, like at what point do we say that like, Hey, this was a failure and, yeah. just, and try something different because you know, like 30 days of, of no work is rough. And it was especially rough on Mark who, has to be busy like even if he like he just he has to be constantly doing something and so um that was just it was an awful month and literally on September 30th we got eight different phone calls and scheduled a ton of work for October and it it was just everybody wanted to get settled like everybody needs to settle in September um, and so I think it, it taught us a couple of valuable lessons. One, never let some old lady talk you down out of your 60%. <laughs> um, and yeah, like you have to kind of be firm with clients. That's yeah. rough. And then two, that like there are some months where people don't hire people. One of those months is is uh, September. Like so you have to have a job already lined up. And one of those months is like, or not months so much, but like, um, we stopped getting asks for bids probably like mid December. Yeah, the holidays. Um, I and would we, we already had, yeah, we already had scheduled work, um, so it wasn't a big deal. But I was like, this is a good thing to note and to notice is that like, hey, you get no bids, like no ask for people, like people don't hit you up for jobs once they have, you know, they're getting ready for the holidays and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and then of course, like January 1st, I think we got like four phone calls. <laughs> yeah. But he's done with the holidays and their kid had slid down their stairs with a skateboard or something like that, you know, like, so I think that was probably the worst. I, yeah. Again, not so much a day, but just a month of just feeling like we had failed for sure that we should shut down the business, that it was not working, that we were failing. Um, 
so it does that was definitely the worst and I think it takes it takes some perseverance to recognize like oh this is not like this is not on us like we didn't do anything wrong here it, it's just the circumstance and that sucks and yeah. can we make it through this circumstance or can we not yeah so absolutely so if we if we flip it if we bring back a little bit of happiness what is the best day of your career so far um ooh i don't know um i I think at the end of that month when we got all that job, all those jobs, <laughs> um, that was great. Um, no, I think that um, it was really great when we got our very first phone call from somebody who didn't know us to do a job yeah. in the construction. Like that was a really great day. It made us feel more confident. Um, and uh, I did a commission art piece in the beginning of December. Oh, okay. And and that was really great. Like, I really love, like, that was really encouraging to me. So I think that whole process um, was just really great. Um, also, um, I mentioned at the beginning, I'm, I'm about to buy a house. Yeah, absolutely. And because we're, we're co-signing, we're, we're planning on co-signing because we've only owned our business for a year and um, banks don't like that, yeah, regardless yeah. of how much money you make. <laughs> Yeah. And um, we were planning on co-signing and we found out that the law had changed and you just have to have one year of taxes under your belt as a business and then they'll consider what you make. And we're about to have that. So we're about to buy this house, hopefully all by ourselves. And the day that the mortgage, like the loan agent told me like, oh, no, I think you could buy it all by yourself. Like you guys are doing really like your business is doing really well. I think I cried. Oh, <laughs> I was just like, what did you say to me? That our business is doing really well? Like, that's crazy talk. I'm so excited. So I think, yeah, like that affirmation from somebody that doesn't really know us, but just looks at the numbers and says like, no, like, I think you guys are, you guys are doing well. Like, that's really great. That affirmation is great. When people you don't know hit you up for work, that's really great. Um, yeah. Because you know it's because they like your stuff. And as much as like your friends probably like your stuff, but... They're a little biased. They're a little biased. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, those are the three really good, really good things. Okay, awesome. And so what are some of the other benefits of owning your own business and in an art industry? I get to create all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, I love to make art. Um, there's nothing that I would rather be doing the doodling and my husband has hated it <laughs> since the day that we got married. Um, and so for me to have found an outlet that also, um, brings in revenue, like, sure, like it, it has really changed like, and, and hopefully it doesn't ever change it for the worst, but it's really changed it to be like, Oh no, honey, like, why don't you spend some time doodling today? You know, like, yeah, and that's been really great. Um, I love, I love to create. I love to create with new mediums. Um, I started doing oil paints this past fall, and that has just been awesome. I really hated it at first. Um, it's really permanent. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but I've really come to love it, and I, I, like, I like doing that. I like the way that it – I like the texture of it. Um, and I think the other – I don't know. The other piece would probably be um, we get to spend a lot of time with our kids, and yeah. that's really great. Um, I um, less now because it's winter time, so Mark working late means that you know um, the kids are probably in bed by the time he gets back. But in the summertime, especially, like it was really great to be able to for him to take a long lunch or something and just play outside with the kids for an hour or so and just be able to do that because he was working in his shop and um he didn't need to worry about whether or not he was wasting somebody's time he was wasting his own time <laughs> like you know and and that's that's just phenomenal and we love being able to share um our passions with our kids um, sure. and hopefully foster in them whatever like 
their passions are and that they would follow that. Um, yeah. Okay. And so what was the moment that you guys decided that, that it, like it clicked for you that this is what you were going to do? Um, <laughs> um, for construction or for contracting, um, Mark has always been Mr. Fix It. So if our friends have a leaky faucet, if our friends have a drywall problem like that they need patched, if they have a this or that, like he's always just been the person that people call and paid like under the table for, you know, odd jobs forever. Sure. And um, I and we had been talking about after we moved back from Mexico, I got a uh, it was not a nine to five. It was more like a nine to nine job emotionally um <laughs> managing a, a yoga studio and I was doing that very full time it was really exhausting because of the owners one of the owners was was particularly difficult and um one day I was fired because I spoke my mind about the business um the the business that I worked for Oh. And I was, I was like, oh, and I came home and I was sobbing and I was just so distraught. And Mark was literally just without hesitating. Well, and I was just like talking about how miserable I had been. Like I'd been miserable for months. I was never home. I never got to spend time with my kids or my husband. I was working for somebody else's dream in a way that it was like neurotic, um, and he just, without missing a beat, he was like, this is fine. It gives us the opportunity and forces us to take a leap and we'll start our business that we've talked about starting. Um, he already had all the tools and, you know, um, and he had, he was doing some part-time jobs already. And so he was like, it's fine. Like, we'll just start to ask people if they need work done and I'll go get licensed and all those kinds of things. So, um, that was kind of the initial jump that kind of forced it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not suggest it to anyone. That's an emotional roller coaster that I <laughs> would, not, <laughs> would not wish on anyone. Um, but I do think that there is a leap portion. And I, I think that for some people, me in particular, less for Mark, but for me in particular, um, I needed I needed to lose my job. Um, I needed to be to feel that pressure of like, like we have to change our life and I have like in order to, to live happier, better lives. And that's important. So, um, I think that that was it for me for the, the contracting piece. And I think for the art piece, um, I started creating again, uh, maybe a year ago. Um, and I had kind of stopped because I was so emotionally drained all the time. And, as I started to do more and more and more, um, I had friends that were just like, why don't you sell that? Or like, why don't you like try to do that? And I was like, "Eh, I don't know. It's just fun. And they were like, no, Malia, you should, (laughs) you should move forward with that. So, um, I decided to take that leap and actually just, just in the last couple of weeks, have I actually taken the leap and really started, I've totally built a store for all the artwork and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm not waiting anymore, which is scary. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so what are you guys, what is your currently your expansion plan or do you have one? I think first step is to like get the store up and running. Um, we've, um, actually just even since I mentioned that we're, we're putting it out, um, uh, we've got everything up right now and you have to email to, to purchase, um, through PayPal, but I have the whole store built and it's just about, you know, websites are, they take a while, but, um, yeah. Um, so that's kind of the next step is to put the store online so that people can just purchase with their credit card and then I can ship out stuff. Um, and, uh, doing prints of the artwork instead of just originals. That's kind of also another step that we're kind of trying to take. Um, and that, that requires a little bit more research. Initially we thought like, Oh, we'll just do them on our computer or on our printer. 
Um, but the more we've looked into it, the more I think something like there's a, there's just a lot of different options. So that's sure. kind of the next step and okay. um, pushing more in toward that art stuff, connecting with more artists that are small and local and do it because they love it um, and, and getting uh, involved with them. That's those are the, the next steps. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so we've kind of gone through what it means to be an owner of an art collective um, and what you kind of do for your career. I just have a few more questions for you. Absolutely. What did you want to be when you were a kid? Um, at what age? <laughs> uh, the earliest age you can think of. Oh, I always wanted to, um, I always wanted to travel extensively, um, like be an explorer. <laughs> that was always my my thing is that I really wanted to be an explorer. I was super obsessed with weird animals. Like I can remember being in preschool and the teacher's like, What's everybody's favorite animal? And everybody's like, A dog, a cat, a dolphin, and I'm like, A pangolin. <laughs> and everybody's like, what is a pangolin? And I'm like, it's this really interesting a- animal with scales that lives in Africa and Southeast Asia. <laughs> oh, that's um, funny. And I was always that kid, and I um, had a super creative imagination. Um, and so I I loved the idea of traveling. And um, and as I got older, I, I really wanted to be an artist. I wanted to create um and be an explorer, both, both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to be an explorer. That's still a <laughs> dream of mine. You never lose your childhood dreams. Nope, not ever. <laughs> okay, and so what is the best piece of business advice you've received? Ooh, have I received? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think... It sounds so dumb. Um, you have to live out your passion. Yeah. I, I think that that is just the best thing because it, it comes down to it all the time. When you're tight for money, when you're struggling with a, a client, when you're feeling like a lack of creativity, I think you have to live your passion. And if you're not doing that, you're never going to be happy. Um, and we set up this idea that, you know, that your passion has to be this really exorbitant thing, like creating art or something like, you know, like, like it has to be like really specific, but your passion can be anything. I mean, your passion can be book work, like your your passion yeah. can be counting, like it can be absolutely anything, but you have to live it and you have to, you have to take the time to get to know yourself well enough to know Hey, my my passion is sitting behind a desk every day from nine to five and going home. Like that's my passion, yeah. and um, <laughs> and like and embracing it. Like yeah. yes, like absolutely, that's your passion. Like as and um, and I think the other one is surround yourself with inspiring people. Um, there are people who will always second guess what you want to do. And will tell you, oh, you should wait until the opportune time, or oh, you should do this, or oh, you should. Don't listen to the you shoulds. You should do whatever you want. <laughs> um, like surround yourself with inspiring people that like encourage you and tell you like that sounds awesome. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but it sounds awesome. Like surround yourself with those people, and like live your passion and surround yourself with people who want you to live your passion. Those are that's the two. Okay. And so if somebody was wanting to start out and they wanted to become an artist and work for themselves, what is, what's the one thing you would tell them um, at the top of your list? Don't create for other people, which maybe sounds counterintuitive because, you I mean, you obviously want people to purchase your stuff. Sure, <laughs> um, yeah. But, um... If you spend time creating things that other people want rather than spending time creating things that you want, um, that's just as life, that's just as draining as like, like working in a cubicle nine to five if that's not your thing. Like, 
that's it's equally as draining. Um, allow yourself to create the things that you want to create. And if you have the opportunity to do a custom piece, make sure that it's a custom piece that you're passionate about. Don't ever, like if somebody says, I want you to do a custom piece of a rhinoceros, and you're like, oh, well, I hate rhinoceroses, so... But I'll do it, I guess. It's good, funny. Like, don't do that. Like, yeah. they like, you know what? That's maybe not for me. You maybe need to hit up a different artist. Because um, I think that that starts to create tired work. So I think if you want to be an artist and you want to you want to create, um, just do what you want to create, and people will love that. And then if people bring you ideas that you like, that's great. But don't take up ideas that you don't like just to make money. Um, that's the that's the way to kill the spark, and I, I just that's just not good. So yeah, I think don't create for other people. Create for yourself, and then and other people will love it. Like they just will. You'll you'll find your niche. Pe- somebody out there is into it. Yeah, absolutely. Sage advice. So thank you for coming on my show today, Malia. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. If you like this episode or you're looking to change your career, go to 28andsearching.com or become a patron to get exclusive content sent directly to you. See you next week.